we all know that the area of a circle with radius r is pi r squared, but you may not know that the area of an ellipse, so area of an ellipse, with the semi-major axis of a and semi-minor axis of b is equal to pi times a times b. That's the area of an ellipse. And note that this formula makes some sense because for a circle, you can think of it as an ellipse. This is an ellipse with a is equal to b is equal to r. When a is equal to r and b is equal to r, we get a circle. And if you plug r into this equation, we get pi r squared as we should. So the equation makes some sense, but you may say, how do you prove this? How do you show that this is always true? So in this video, we are not only going to prove that area of an ellipse is pi times a times b by thinking about a transformation that squishes ellipse into a circle, that pushes ellipse into a circle. And after we prove that, we are also going to show that volume of an ellipsoid. This is an ellipsoid, a three-dimensional analog of an ellipse with length a, b, and c, these semi-principal axes of a, b, and c is 4 thirds a times b times c. That's volume of an ellipsoid. So we will show both of these. So let's start with an easier one. Let's look at the ellipse. To begin with, think of this transformation. We are going to keep the b the same. We are going to keep this distance always the same. So this distance is also going to be b and this distance is also going to be b, and this is a circle, so this distance is also a b, and we are pushing inward from the left and the right. So we are squishing this inward such that the red eye, the a is getting smaller and smaller, so a is getting smaller and smaller until a becomes b, so until the ellipse gets pushed into a circle. And you may say, how is this going to help us? Well, let's think of the same thing happening, but this time with a rectangle. So let's say we have a rectangle with lengths 6 and 2. As we shove the left and right side of the rectangle inward, we are going to get a square. We are eventually going to get a square such that the side length is 2. And let's see how the area of the rectangle changed as we squished it in. Will the area at the start so before the transformation is 6 times 2 or 12. But the area at the end, so area at the end is 2 times 2 or 4. And realize that we multiply 6 by 1 third to get 2. And also, note that the area was reduced by the same factor. Area was also multiplied by 1 third. And one way of writing this is like this. Area at the start divided by area at the end is equal to length of the side at the start divided by the length of the side at the end because area and the length is changing proportionally. So we can set up this ratio. And of course, when I say the length, I mean the length in the direction that pushing is occurring. So I'm talking about 6 and 2. I'm not talking about this 2 that's not changing. I'm talking about the length that is changing during the transformation. So knowing this, now let's try to apply it in the case of an ellipse being pushed into a circle. Looking at this equation, we know the area at the start or the area of an ellipse, so area of an ellipse, divided by the area at the end, which is going to be the area of a circle with radius b. So that's pi b squared. And we know that has to be equal to length of this side, the side that's being pushed in, so a, so length of the side at the start divided by the length of the side at the end, which is b. So we know area of an ellipse over pi b squared is a over b. So all that's left is to solve this equation for area of an ellipse. And we quickly see that area of an ellipse is a over b times pi b squared or pi times a times b. So we have shown that the area of an ellipse is pi times a times b. Now let's try to extend this method to a three-dimensional space, to an ellipsoid. So let's think about how the transformation is going to change the ellipsoid as we squish the sides inward to form a sphere. 
let's say c is the smallest side so let's say the c is the smallest side so in this case we are going to push a inward until a becomes c so that's going to be one transformation and we're going to push b inward until b becomes c as well so in this case we have to go through two transformation not just one and let's think about how each of the transformation is going to change the volume of an ellipsoid so let's think so let's draw a box so draw a box and let's say the length, width and height or 6, 2 and 4. So in this case, if we push 6 until it becomes a 2, so if we push it until this becomes a 2, so this 4 stays the same for now. So if we have 2, 4, 2 at the end, how is the volume changing? Well, volume at this point is 6 times 4 times 2 or 24 times 2 or 48 and volume at the end is 2 times 4 times 2 or 16. So note that when we reduce 6 by a factor of 3, so when we multiply this by one third, volume is also getting multiplied by one third. So in this case, in this case, volume at the start over volume at the end is going to be the length at the start over length at the end. So in this case, we are comparing volume to length, not area to length, which makes sense because now we are in three-dimensional space. 